Hey, so congratulations. You decided to buy a Sony PVM 2030. This is one of the most iconic PVMs simply because of the black cube design. It also has a unique set of features that aren't on every other PVM and is truly an unsung hero and one of the more underrated PVMs that were ever made. However, you might be asking yourself, how do I properly set this up? Consider it, it's a 30 year old monitor and there's not much documentation online about how to properly use this in 2021. Now, in order to get this properly set up, we don't wanna start with the front of the monitor. We need to go around and look at the back. So let's switch around now and take a look at the back side. On the back of the monitor, you've got two important sections. First, the top section, which is more about adjustments and settings a little bit. The only thing I will tell you first off is to make sure that the controls up here, let's say remote and manual at the top are both in the on position. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that exactly right next to the Sony label. Make sure they are both snapped in the on position. And that means you can control the TV with a remote and the manual buttons on the front side. Now, for now, let's not concern ourselves with the rest of these. We'll get into that a little bit later. First off, let's focus on this area down here and talk about the different inputs. First, we have our computer input on the far left. This is a D sub connector. I believe it's 25 pins. There is a switch on here that says sync on green. Most of the time you're going to be using sync on green off. So you'll have normal sync going into this monitor, not sync on green. This is what we'll be using for our RGB input. It accepts RGB and it accepts digital RGB. So you may even have a retro computer that outputs digital RGB that you could hook up to this D sub with a separate adapter. But what we're going to do is use a SCART adapter into this and that will give us our RGB input. Under that, you've got control S in and out, which are just controls that are pretty much obsolete at this point that Sony had control S where you could daisy chain different devices such as VHS players and other controllers in, that were made by Sony and link them together for use with a single remote. Next, we've got our two composite inputs, line A and line B. Again, we've got a switch where it says off and on and then 75 ohms. That is your terminator. So it has built in termination. So you do not need to add 75 ohm terminators on here. What you do need to do is leave it on if you're not daisy chaining the outputs to another device, or if you are daisy chaining, then make sure that you turn the switch to off and then daisy chain into your secondary device from the output. Now you can see these are not normal connections. If you just getting into broadcast quality video, you will not be probably familiar with these. These are BNC style connectors and you can use a BNC style cable or what we will do is we will convert this to an RCA input. That way we can feed in a normal composite cable, a normal analog video cable into these and those adapters will be uh, slid on and just snapped on and we'll show you that when we connect everything. Under that, you've got left and right audio. You can input your audio into this monitor and then output to another device again. There's our line A. Line B is designed the exact same way as line A. And then we've got a VTR in. And this is another input that is switchable. Most of the time, you're gonna be using it switched to the left so you can access the S-Video input on the back of this monitor. It also has stereo audio inputs, and then it has this green connector, which is an obsolete VTR connector for a videotape recorder that was a commercial style video recorder used back in the 80s. Under the VTR, you'll notice these red and black inputs. That is for your stereo audio out. This monitor has a built-in amplifier, so you can get stereo audio directly out of the monitor, which is not a normal feature of really any other PVM other than these 30 series and maybe the 2950. Speakers, you need to use eight to 16 ohm speakers. That's really your only uh, qualification or specification that you need to worry about for the speakers. 
And then you've got a right positive and negative input and a left positive and negative input. Those are very simple to install, and it is a very nice feature of this monitor to have that. Finally, we have an additional AC output that works. So this is a hot output. Whenever your monitor is plugged in, you can add another plug into this that operates on 120 volts and that will give you a live electricity right out of that even if the monitor is turned off this monitor does include a built-in power cable so please note that and then there are racks on the side to store the power cable when you want to turn it or move it you can wrap the cord around there and safely secure it now the only two inputs on this monitor that have outputs are line A for composite and line B for composite. You cannot daisy chain out either the computer input or the S video. So you cannot go out of this monitor and daisy chain into another if with just using the RGB or the S video. All right, that's a good explanation. Let's start hooking some things up. First off, this is the D-Sub adapter that is sold by different suppliers online. It's converting the D-Sub into RGB sync, and it is not C-Sync, just but it will accept C-Sync. And this simply plugs in, and it gives you your video feed into your computer output so when we use the computer input, I'm sorry, the computer input, when we use that on our monitor, we have now got a SCART plug to plug either our console or our SCART switcher in. You'll notice we have a left and a right audio in or you know, into the monitor, and we can use this with this monitor, even though there's not a physical audio signal built into the computer input, we can use one of the any of these other audios for one that we're not using or one that we might daisy chain. So let me show you, for example, I'm going to plug in to the A line, my left and my right audio, and this would be an example of how to set up properly to use RGB and get your audio signal. I'll show you that when we turn it on. We'll leave it set like that, and that would mean that... Uh, you're probably not going to use line A, but I can show you a way to use line A for both composite and to do your audio. That would be simply adding, say, a Y connector, and you would need to add one of these to each left and right, and that way you can connect the right from your computer adapter in. Then you could connect your uh, other side right audio from your composite input. So that would not be this side, but that would be the input cable from your composite device that you're feeding into it. And then you just attach, I just attached the BNC to RCA adapter so that it can have normal cables slide on and off of it. So you could put your composite video in here and then your right audio from your composite device could go in there. And then you'd have another Y connector like this on here, and you do the same thing for the left side audio. So you'd have left and right audio breaking out for both. That way you could use this, uh, but a lot, if you don't have any other reason to input into that and you just want to use it for only the computer input and you're not going to use the video input, then you can set it up like that and you'll be fine. Now... Again, if you want to use the RCA or the BNC adapter, you can use the RCA adapter, and then you'll have the video you can plug in here, and then left and right audio, and then S video is just connected into there, and you could do the same thing on the outputs, have it going out to something on each one of these, and you can again either use a BNC cable or one of these RCA adapters. The last thing you'd want to connect are your left and your right speakers and that would just be connected by pushing down these, slipping in the cable, copper end, and then letting them go and they'll hold them in place. And obviously you can plug anything that you need to into this. So now we're gonna go ahead and turn this around and we'll run a demo on how to get your audio working uh, through this adapter setup. Now we can get the monitor turned on and start looking at some of our controls. We could press power, 
and it will take a second for the monitor to come on, and we have a control over here. If you press the control button, it will light up your control buttons that you could use to make adjustments or change inputs on the side here. On the right hand side, you have a volume control and a picture control. The picture control is pretty much another contrast control. There's not an actual contrast control listed on here. So picture works as contrast. Under that, you've got four lit up selections and these are your input selections. You've got line A, line B, VTR, and computer at the bottom. The ones that you're currently on will be blinking. So we have line A and computer blinking. So to switch to whatever input, you simply select that input, press the button, it'll switch over to that input. Right now we are on line A, which would be composite analog video. Line B is composite analog video. VTR is S video or the VTR input. And then computer is our computer input. You notice every time you press computer, you'll get one of these flashing with it. It's whichever one you press before computer. So if I press B and then computer, it would be B and computer flashing. VTR and computer, it would be VTR and computer flashing. And that is how you connect the audio. So we have our audio connected to line A. So we want line A flashing and we want computer flashing. So whatever input you have your audio connected to, that needs to be flashing with your computer input. Now over here are just some picture controls and some other sound controls. From this point below, these last three are all to do with sound. You've got left and right balance, bass and treble controls for your amplifier. Above that, we have some screen controls. You have hue, color, brightness, and sharpness. Just so you know, if you are using the computer input, you will not get to use hue, color or sharpness. That is only for S video or composite video, those three selections. So pressing them will literally do nothing when you are using the computer input. What you can do is adjust your brightness and your picture or contrast on any input that you're using. There's also a reset button at the top that will reset it if you get your color or your hue, or your brightness, or your picture. If you change that a lot and you want to get back to what the normal setting is when you turn the monitor on, you simply hit reset and it will do that. Now let's turn our Super Nintendo on and we should get a picture on our screen here. There we go. Now please note that when you initially power this monitor on and any monitor that's from the 1990s and that older age, there is generally a warm up period. This one will take about 15 seconds for it to warm up and finally show an image on initial startup. Then you can leave it running and it'll look beautiful. But these older monitors do take a little bit of time to warm up. And then generally you want to give them at least five minutes to really warm up before you just really make any adjustments. That way the CRT is warmed up, everything's good on it, and that is completely normal. Even a service CRT can take that time to warm up. We've got our picture on here. This is RGB. And again, we are using audio through line A. All that is working. And that is a majority of how we would control this monitor. We would not uh, get any other controls in this monitor. There is no sub menu built into it. That is one of the down features on this monitor, but it does again have many other good features that we've already discussed. One other feature that it has that we have not talked about is its limited support for a remote control. Now, I don't have the official remote anymore for this television. There is, or this monitor, there is an official one that came with the monitor to begin with. But what I have is a Sony television remote from a similar television. This remote is Y137A. Now I can't use 95% of the buttons on this, but what I can do is if I have it set to TV, I could do a couple things. First off, I have a muting button and if I press it, it hits mute. So I can control mute with this but, uh, remote. I can also power it off and put it into standby mode, which turns the tube off, but you'll notice it's still powered on, and you just hit power and it'll come back on.
and we'll take a second to turn on like that. So once it's on, I can control the, if you press up and down on volume, I can control up and down on the volume control. And again, turn it on and off. Now, if you have the official remote, it will let you cycle through inputs and it will give you the picture control on the remote control, but that's it. There's nothing else on there. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to the remote that's official. Unfortunately, my remote will not let me change inputs or do the picture control, but you could probably get a Sony code for any universal remote and get at least the functionality to control the volume and turn the monitor on and off without getting up and pushing the power button. You can leave it in standby mode and it'll be perfectly fine and safe. Let's look at the back panel on top again one more time and go over the important things on here. We've already talked about the control features. Make sure they again are set to on. And then just a quick look at your model number label over here. It should say 2030, give you some other information. The important thing on here is that the AC current on this monitor is rated for 120 volts. 50 slash 60 hertz, so it should support PAL consoles as well as NTSC and a 150 watt max. So that's all you need to know about power. Next to it, we have these one, two, three, four, five controls, and only two of them are important. So let's talk about those two first. That would be this V hold knob, which spins, and then our degauss button which is a push button, and then you just let it go. The rest of these are pretty much useless. Start with degauss. Degaussing is a, a process to try to use a magnetic burst to push all your electrons back to where they're supposed to be. So if you have a purity or a discoloration on the screen, please use this degausser that is built into the monitor. You simply have your monitor turned on, let it warm up for 30 seconds, and then you just push in this button. Now, Sony says to properly do it, you need to hold the button down for about 20 seconds and then let it go. And then don't do that again for another, say, 15 minutes. But that is gonna clear up 99% of any color issues that you have on your monitor if you, if you have it. That does happen when you move a monitor or maybe introduce a speaker to it uh, temporarily you might get a discoloration just come in here and use this degausser to correct the color now again we have this notch and new dynamic color these uh, i've never been able to get these to actually do anything they do have some claims in the manual to do something but they don't really do anything when you try to use them the best thing you can do is just leave them to their normal settings which just like over here is gonna be the highlighted or blocked out selection. So new dynamic color, you can just leave it to the on setting. Notch, leave it to the off setting. Over here again, horizontal center. I wish this did work for regular analog video, but it only works for digital RGB. But the V hold will work on any signal. And what that is, is if you turn on your monitor and you have an issue with vertical scrolling, like the picture will look uh, go up and down uh, fast. Sometimes it could just be a little bit of a scroll. When you switch an input, you might notice a slow scroll to the next input, down, or it might scroll up. Spin this until your image is stable, and then that will fix all those issues. So if you get one of these monitors and scroll in real bad, that's very common because a lot of times these will get spun or turned easily and it'll just throw this, the setting off and it's an easy fix. Just turn your V-hold and that'll be it. Well, there you go. Now you should be able to turn on your monitor, navigate through the inputs a little bit and use it for gaming. It's also really great for old analog video that is in the form of a VHS or even old four by three DVDs and laser discs. Any of that older video format will really look superb on this monitor. You can definitely use those analog inputs for other things, again, like a VCR or a laser display. Most of those are only composites, so that's a great thing to plug into that line A and line B. And then the S-Video, you can plug in anything that really has S-Video support, and it will, of course, look great as good uh, right below the RGB, which will look the best on this CRT. The tube itself is under, right under 600 TV lines for resolution. Again, it is a true 20-inch 
size. So it's one inch bigger than 95% of the Sony PVMs that are out there. Most of them are only 19 inches. This one does need to be adjusted internally for geometry and other colors and things like that with the tube. So it's not something that you're just going to be able to make a lot of adjustments while you're using it. It's going to have one overall adjustment setting for the screen and then you just kind of work with that. There are some devices that you could get to help you change the geometry a little bit that are electronic, that are outside of the monitor. I'd suggest maybe adding something like that. But all in all, it's a great monitor. It's a perfect for most people because it's pretty simple to use and there's not really anything you could screw up with it. It's a real good workhorse, especially one that's been restored like the one you see here. And that's pretty much it. Go ahead now and use it, enjoy it, and I will see you guys next time with some more retro content.